Okay, in this video we're going to look at FWA with an external antenna enclosure, the pointing EPNT1, and this is just a little intro to the intro. So um, I'm going to give you a quick intro and kind of point out the things that we're going to be doing and what equipment we're going to use. We're going to do a site survey on top of this R panel building, and then we're going to put an 1850 inside the building. We're going to leave this booster on. This is a high boost LTE booster. The 4K, we're going to put the booster on, see what kind of RSRP, RSRQ, and SINAR we get. We're going to turn the booster off and see what we get. And then we're going to put the 1850 in a windowsill. Unfortunately, it's not facing the tower. It's facing away from it, but we're going to put it in the windowsill. That's the best possible place we could put it, in this building anyway. And we'll see what, uh, again, RSRP, RSRQ, and SINAR are. And then we're going to go outside with the external enclosure, put the 1850 in the external enclosure, put it up in a mask, and see what kind of numbers we get there. So for all you guys that cannot sit through a 20 minute video like me, hear the results. You can stop the video and review them for yourself here. The one thing clearly I'll point out is the EPNT enclosure with the 1850 in it. You know, negative 100, that looks a little bit worse there, but we more than make up for it in RQ. There, 5.8 for Sinar. I did face it towards the tower. Again, it's omnidirectional, but I made sure that 1850 was away from the tower. Final thoughts. Obviously, yes, the EPNT was much better RSRP, RSRQ, and Sinar, and this equals higher order. Quam. For you guys that don't follow this stuff, don't know what Quam is, if you have better RSRP, RSRQ, and SINAR, you're going to get better Quam, and Quam equates to higher speeds. And the way you kind of get the higher speeds is, I like to think of it as zipping a file. So if I have better numbers in my RF, I can zip the file across the air and send it to the tower or receive it from the tower. And if you think about that, if you're zipping a file, a big file, you compress it and it uses less bandwidth, right? The same kind of goes on for high order QAM, kind of. You'll get the file faster because it has to transmit less. It's been compressed um, on the transmitting end or if you're transmitting and you're compressing the file, it's gonna get uploaded, your document's gonna get uploaded or something, you know, uh, faster into OneDrive. So the speeds are faster you get two things out of this. The customer gets better speeds, right? But the underlying benefit also is the MNO. So us, Verizon, we get better spectrum efficiency. If everyone is zipping files and sending them across the air, obviously they're gonna use less bandwidth across the air. Using less bandwidth across the air means that there's more spectrum to go around to other customers. So you're being a efficient user, you're being a neighborly, guess if you are after better rp rq and sinar so again you're helping out your fellow neighbors you're going to get better speed and the mno themselves are going to have better spectral efficiency hopefully that makes sense hi Nancy garcia with verizon and today we're going to be taking a look at a antenna enclosure now there's a few tests i'm going to run and i'm going to take you guys with me so you can see live what the results are so a little bit about what i have I have a cradle point 1850 here. I got the cheap paddle antennas that come with it. All right, we'll put that aside. I got some exterior grade ethernet cable. And then we have this guy right here. This is from Pointing Antennas. Thank you for the guys that sent it to me for uh, to evaluate. It's an AEPNT 001 V1 01. It's a cross-polarized, omnidirectional, 5G LT and Wi-Fi antenna. I will put a link to the data sheet below, and I'll try to flash up here the model number and also the gain for particular frequencies. Now, I'm in an area that's 4G only, so we're only going to be doing 4G frequencies here. So let's take a look at what is in here. And what exactly am I going to test? Is it worth you staying around? We'll see. So 
first we'll test the 1850 with the paddle antennas just on a rack this is a industrial building it's an r panel building penetration is is uh pretty difficult the tower i'll flash up the tower where the towers are okay on the left t-mobile and dish three quarters of a mile away on the right verizon at&t 1.2 miles away i'm going to pan down here and there's the building uh, right there and the antenna mast where we're going to put the enclosure is right there on the south side of the building and things like that right here as well what we're going to do is put that on a rack i have a little data rack that i have uh, up in the loft here so we'll put that on a rack we'll get rsrp rsrq and sign our numbers then we'll put this in a window i have a window facing west there is a tower about two miles from here i'll show you that on a map here um, during this video as well and the other tower, my closest tower, the tower I usually hook up to, is to the east, about a mile. All right, and I'll show you that as well. So, we'll put it in the window. Again, the window is facing away from the tower, or away from the closest tower. I do have a lean-to on the side here that's over that window, and it kind of bounces that RF back. So, we'll do that. Rack, window... And then, let me show you this. This enclosure here. Like I said, cross-polarized, omnidirectional antenna. Let me show you the back, and this kind of splits in half. Uh, you got 4x4 MIMO here. You also have Wi-Fi if you want that as well. And um, what happens here is these two go together run your PoE exterior Ethernet to this guy you power up the adapter in here you have the best possible scenario you got this outside you know um, with no obstructions um, and hopefully we're gonna get very good RSRP RSRQ and SINAR so we'll take a look at those numbers just real quick um, we'll see what's in here in the box I don't like doing unboxings or anything like that, so I'll do make this quick. This is our little panel that goes in the bottom, and then we have a little bladder that goes in there that squeezes against our Ethernet cable. This is IP66 rated, so uh, we'll make sure that we put that Ethernet cable in there for PoE, and we're going to cinch that up. We have a couple of other, we got some pipe clamps, obviously. We're going to mount this on a, on a mast. Uh, there's our little bladder. It looks like we have some drywall anchor. No, those are some uh, concrete anchors if we want to put it outside. It also comes with some other X, um, SMA pigtail that's for your Wi-Fi. And this is interesting. We have some little suction cups so you can put this thing on, a, on um, your window, you know, kind of suction a cup to the external, uh, uh, external um, your outside of the window. Definitely wouldn't put it inside. I guess you could do that since it's omnidirectional, but um, um, the only thing with that I was thinking of is um, what we have is an 1850, right? And this is made of metal, and this is omnidirectional, and we're going to put this metal right on the back of this omnidirectional. So uh, I definitely wouldn't uh, put this on the inside of the window uh, because uh, this would be kind of obstructing the RF a little bit. So. Yeah, we'll make sure not do that. What else? I, I will, I just uh, uh, thought of this and brought this over here. This is the Wilson Pro uh, cell link. Before I put it up on the mast, I will do a site survey and you'll see that with me. We'll look at the different bands and uh, see what RPRQ and SINAR we get on the different bands and see, you know, um, we're just going to use the included antenna, but we're going to see if we get any gain uh, from this. So we should, we should get, you know, since this is a professional grade antenna, using the site survey kit versus uh, this professional grade antenna with this 1850 in there and hooked up to these uh, SMA connectors, we should get something. I'm hoping that we get some better numbers or it would be just like, uh, if we don't get better numbers, it'd be like, you know, we put the 1850 outside, you know, in a plastic baggie with, with the uh, 
uh, with the paddle antennas, right? So we don't want that. Or we we want to gain something if we're going to pay a little bit of money for uh, an antenna exterior. So why am I doing this? Well, um, the reason I was interested in this is Cradle Point's coming out with, uh, and, and Cisco as well, some other manufacturers, co-located um, antennas with the radios, right? That's a thing. That's what we do on our towers today. When we're modernizing a tower, we're pulling down all that uh, coax cable, we're putting co-located radio and antennas up there to, so we don't get that loss of gain, that attenuation on the cable, right? So we're putting everything co-located. So it's kind of a thing in the towers, so it's kind of making its way into the uh, commercial and retail uh, space also. All right, we're on top of the building, about the height of where we're gonna put the 1850 in the enclosure, and we're gonna do a site survey. To kind of get a baseline of what the antenna is gonna do for us. Let's do a scan here, let's start. Yep, again, we're using the uh, Wilson Pro Cell Link Site Survey Kit. On the Site Survey Adapter, I just have the regular included omnidirectional five inch antenna. How good will the numbers be compared to what's out here already? All right, there we go. I will do a quick filter. Oh, I do have this filtered already. It's only seeing Verizon stuff. And, um, yeah. And just to give you a quick little look at everything else, let's go back here just so you see everything. All right, I got Project Genesis. I got an antenna. Did a video on that. About three quarters of a mile from me. Band 71, 5G stuff. It's not too good. So I'm just going to go through this so you see everything. I'll import this, put it in the uh, presentation, and link that in the video for sure. Okay, I got my 1850 hooked up here. You can see it's online and let's get the numbers for it now before if you guys have watched my videos before you know i have a booster in here the server antenna is right over there the donor antenna is on the outside of that on the exterior of that wall up on the mast so i will unplug that and if i get time i'll go ahead and plug that in and we'll get the numbers the rp um rq and sign our numbers with the booster as well so let's take a look at what we get with it up here in the worst possible place Let's log in. And let's go to NetCloud OS here. We're going to go local. We're going to go to status, internet, connections, and we're going to go down and see what we got. So let's first look at our RP, negative 112. So we're, we're fairly weak. We'll call that weak here. And I'll put all these numbers in a little spreadsheet or a table for you guys so you can evaluate. Uh, RQ negative 14 it's kind of medium and then let's go look at our noise so definitely inside in a steel building this should be pretty bad and it looks like it is so anything you know i think anything zero to like 13 ish or 12 ish is weak considered you know or, or medium I, I would say weak is is less than zero so you know i guess we're okay however i didn't tell you this before I have my booster on so I told you I was going to turn my booster off a second ago but I left it on because it's just easier to do the test with it on okay this is the high high boost 4k booster let me go turn that off and I'll be right back and we'll see if these numbers get worse well they will get worse how worse they will get we'll see okay I'm back and you can see the numbers are fairly terrible negative 115 i thought it would be worse than that i did see negative 120 right when i walked up to my screen here so that's pretty bad uh rsrq is definitely bad that's weak you know negative 20 is probably the worst you can get our sign r is negative 13 that's bad right we we want to be we want to be above zero and we want to be you know 20 is kind of the best scenario so we're we're negative 12. Anything less than zero is pretty bad with Sinar. I can't even believe we're connected here. Let's do, let's just do a 
a ping out to the internet. So this computer, this virtual machine here is connected um, to that guy. So let's ping Cisco, see what we get here. You know, we get some high ping times there. Let's do that again. Yeah, you can see those those high ping times. Let's just do a, a minus T there and see. I'm not going to do any speed tests because they're so out of whack sometimes, right? Unless you could do speed test and all your testing at the same time, and I'm moving this thing around, it's it's really not fair to do speed tests um, be, because they can be all over the map depending on the backhaul congestion, the tower congestion, the sector congestion, RF conditions, and things like that. So anyway, you can see that. I'll do some pings there. See pretty bad numbers. All right, let's continue on. Okay, now we've moved our 1850 from the worst possible place, which is on the data rack up there, to the best possible place, which is in this window right here. Let's check out the numbers now. Okay, we're in the window now. Let's go take a look at what we get now. Let's take a look at RP first. So negative 106 in the window. Okay, well that's pretty good. We're getting we're getting better. Right? I'm gonna put these numbers up here in just a second. RQ, so our quality is at negative 15. Okay, that's that's worse than it was on the on the rack. That's interesting. Okay, and then our Sinar is 4.8. Okay, now that we have the wasps out of the way, we can um, install the antenna enclosure. We're going to run the cable and we're going to do a site survey. The rack that you saw a second ago that the 1850 was on is on the other side of this R panel right here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and install the antenna uh, right up here somewhere. And we'll run that exterior grade ethernet cable right into that uh, box right there we'll go on the other side connect it to poe and uh, install the 1850 inside the enclosure and we should be good to go Flux capacitor is working. We have gigawatts of power. We got the enclosure set up. The 1850s in it. Cables run. It's powered up, and we also have a beautiful sunset. Okay, I went in through NetCloud Manager this time just to show you a different way of looking at this stuff. So here we are. Had it on for a while. It's up on the pole, right in the EPNT enclosure and these are our numbers I'll just kind of brief through them real quick right here and it's all LTE stuff so we don't have anything there but let me bring this over and um, kind of thus far <clears throat> this is what we got so um, I actually had negative 95 there for for a while so that was really good um, and then I was fooling around with the box and stuff like that. And anyway, um, I got as good as negative 95 here. Uh, the actual RSRP right here is good, right? And our RSRQ and SINAR is looking better too. 